Curly's wife. Curly's wife is perhaps one of the most misunderstood characters in Of Mice and Men. As Steinbeck chose not to give her a name, she is known simply as Curly's wife. This reveals her status as a woman in the context of the time and place. In the eyes of the men on the ranch, that is all she is, and, from a reader's perspective, she has that constant association with Curly, even though the two of them are never seen together alive. It also shows the male-dominated environment of ranch life, where tensions run high because of her presence. As George says, Ranch with a bunch of guys on it ain't no place for a girl, especially like her. Revealing the context of the time, and particularly the precarious working conditions of ranch life, the men fear the trouble she could cause them. This is particularly true for George and Lenny. She clearly makes an impression on both men. Lenny exclaims simply that she was pretty, while George says, I ain't never seen a piece of jailbait worse than her. You leave her be. We first hear about Curly's wife from Candy. Though she is pretty, very few of the men view this positively. Indeed, her attractive appearance causes most of the men to react negatively towards her. When will you see Curly's wife? It's worth noting that the only character who says something nice to Curly's wife is Slim. Hi, good looking. Steinbeck gives detailed descriptions of her appearance and her actions, both of which are sexually provocative and flirtatious. Her face was heavily made up, her lips were slightly parted, she breathed strongly as though she had been running. Candy tells us on more than one occasion that she got the eye. Together, this heightens the men's fear of her, and also leads the many derogatory labels she is given by the men. For example, she is called a tart, tramp, bitch, poison, jailbait, and rat trap. The word trouble is used frequently in association with her. As Curly's wife knows, it's in the collective as a group that the men treat her cruelly. If I catch anyone man and he's alone, I get along fine with him. But just let two of the guys get together and you won't talk. She expands on the point, highlighting the climate of fear that controls the men's lives as ranch hands. You're all just scared of each other, that's what. Every one of you's scared and the rest is gonna get something on you. Like many of the characters, Curly's wife experiences loneliness, something that is clearly revealed in Chapter 4 when she goes to Crooks' room. She has no one to talk to on the farm, and in many ways she is as isolated as Crooks. I ain't giving you no trouble. Think I don't like to talk to somebody every once in a while? When Candy and Crooks round on her, she reveals a frustration with hostile and cruel threats, which prey on their status and race on the ranch. When Candy threatens to tell, her status and power is revealed. Tell him be damned. Nobody will listen to you and you know it. Nobody will listen to you. In chapters 4 and 5, she reveals details of her relationship with Curly and events surrounding their marriage. When she does not receive a letter from the man from Hollywood, she challenges her mother. I asked her if she stole it too. And she says no. So I married Curly. Trapped in a loveless marriage. I don't even like Curly. He ain't a nice fella. She desperately seeks company and affection from the other men. She clearly fears Curly too, hinting at the fact that he's violent towards her. Early in the novel, she is apprehensive when Slim warns her that Curly went into the house. And, in Chapter 4, Candy uses her fear of Curly to force her to leave. If you go right now, we won't tell Curly you was here. Curly's wife, like other characters, has her own dream. To be in the pictures. She boasts, I could have went with shows. However, as we see, her dream is as unattainable as that of the men she mocks. Baloney. I've seen too many of you guys. She confides in Lenny about the life she feels she could have had. If I'd win, I wouldn't be living like this. You bet. Her dream, like theirs however, is based on the conditional if. Curly's wife is a tragic character who meets with a tragic end. 
As Lenny's grip tightens, we are told that. She continued to struggle, and her eyes were wild with terror. He shook her then, and he was angry with her. Don't you go yell, he said, and he shook her, and her body flopped like a fish. And then she was still, for Lenny had broken her neck. Following her death, none of the men show her any sympathy. Indeed, Candy reacts cruelly towards her, even as she lay dead. You ain't no good now, you lousy tart. Structurally, her death is presented to contrast with Lenny's, both in the manner of the deaths and in relation to the idea of dreams. And the meanness and the plannings and the discontent and the ache for attention were all gone from her face. She was very pretty and simple and her face was sweet and young. 